Hey everybody, today we're talking about conditional statements, which are parts of code that actually execute dependently on the truth value of a condition. So what that means is that sometimes you might, based on the values of certain uh, you know, variables, how they're related to each other, or based on certain truth statements, you might want certain pieces of code to execute at some times and not execute during other times. So I'll try to give an example right now. Now for this uh, for this example, I feel like it's important for me to disclose that I am not an expert on water tower regulations. Uh, so I would not consider this video a source of accurate ways on how to build your personal water tower or the water tower for any city that you're commissioned to do it. So uh, building water towers for that, you might want to uh, consult the regulations of whatever dis uh, jurisdiction you're trying to build that water tower for. But regardless, uh, that piece of disclosure aside, let's say you're trying to build a water tower and you're using MATLAB to calculate the amount of material that you need in order to build that water tower. So the main, uh, let's see, if you're trying to build your water tower like this, you know, you have your little st struts that are holding up everything like so. Those struts all have to be a certain height. You'll have four of those. So the height of the water tower is going to um, partially, is going to determine how uh, tall these struts need to be. And then, when you're building the large tank, like so, let's say it's circular. Uh, it's not necessarily circular, right? Uh, you know, it's got the name of your city on it, maybe some cool art, all kinds of fun stuff on there. But if you're looking at, oh, this is also a horribly designed water tower because I'm sure it's going to fall over this way as soon as it gets designed. But let's say, let's say you're actually trying to design this thing right. You're using MATLAB to figure out how much material you'll need for a spherical water tower with a certain radius on structs of a certain height. So let's say that the regulations of the jurisdiction that you're building this water tower in state that the minimum height of a water tower has to be 10 meters off the ground and the maximum height has to be 90 meters off the ground. Furthermore, that the minimum radius is, needs to be 15 meters off the ground and the maximum radius needs to be 120 meters off the ground. Now, it's all well and good for you to say, use the code for yourself, right? So you make the code and you run that code, if you, by yourself, check to make sure that, okay, well, all the rate, all the radius and height, all of that looks good. So I'm then, I'm now going to calculate this too, so that we can start buying material and making plans. However, what if your code, what if you're trying to let other people use your code who might not be aware of these regulations? Or what if you forget to check sometime and then you accidentally build a water tower that's too low and then it's no longer effective at getting water to your citizens? That's a bad thing. So where uh, conditional statements can come in handy is you can probably check, let's say that if uh, the min height, or sorry, if our height is between min height and max height. So we can say min height is less than or equal to our height. This is not MATLAB code, by the way. Uh, so don't really follow this too closely. We'll figure out, we'll, we'll talk about how to do this kind of stuff later on. Let's say if our height is between our min height and height, uh, let's see, height is less than or equal to max height and radius is less than or, uh, is less than or equal to max radius and radius is greater than or equal to min radius. So these are all the conditions that need to be fulfilled in order for us to actually start running the code in order to say, hey, uh, let, let's actually build this water tower. So if all of this is true, then we can uh, start doing our calculations. So calculate water tower material. And then we can say as part of another condition, let's say uh, else if, if uh, at least one of these conditions is not met, so let's say if height happens to be less than the minimum height, then we're gonna have to, we're gonna want to come down here and say uh, error. Consult local guidelines, and maybe write some messaging saying like what the min height, max height, min radius, max radius is, that kind of stuff. 
So this is one example of how conditional statements can actually be really useful for us is uh, checking, uh, checking to make sure that uh, certain parameters are valid or making sure that only certain parts of the code block actually execute. So off of this arbitrary error, what we're going to do is we're actually going to start learning the MATLAB code for how to do something like this, where you can say something like, if condition is true, then do something. So here, the first thing we're going to talk about is the if statement, which basically takes the form if and then some sort of condition that return that goes into a logical true or logical false statement. And then down here is all the code that runs if condition is true. So if condition equals one. And then we can put an end here to specify, okay, we have, we are no longer doing all of the code that runs if condition is one. And then we just continue on with our program as normal. So if we have code like this that we're running, we're running, we're running. Now let's say, actually, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make purple, uh, I'll section this off right here. I'll make purple the path when condition true. And what happens here is that if we're, we're going to follow along the code, we're going to run all of this stuff, and then we're going to check, is the condition true? You say that, okay, well, the condition is true. So then we'll keep on running through all of this code down here. We'll reach the end and then keep on going down like this. Now, let's say that we look at the path when condition is false. And I'll use green this time. So we're going to come down here. We're going to run all this code. We're going to check the condition here. Say, okay, now let's say the condition is false. We're not going to run all this code at all. Instead, we're going to skip it and come down here and run all this code down here. So that's basically what the if statement is. As you wait for a condition is, you wait to see if a condition is true. If that condition is true, you run all of this stuff and then you continue on with the code. Otherwise, if that condition is false, you skip all this stuff and come down to the end. So let's take a look at what look, what this looks like if we uh, work on this in MATLAB. All right, so what I have here is I have some example code that handled this problem. Now, um, the first thing I want to point out is you can ignore these errors right here. Uh, what it basically says is that when uh, both the arguments are numerical scalars, consider replacing and with and and for performance. Uh, Really, you can just leave that alone, or you can use and and if you want MATLAB to stop yelling at you. That shouldn't be a problem whatsoever. Like, uh, so you can do that, like, so. Regardless, uh, that's not the point of this. What I have right here is I have some example code that calculate the vo total volume of material needed for my uh, hypothetical wa water tower with these hypothetical uh, restrictions right here. So up here, I have... A whole bunch of stuff. These are the restrictions that are needed for the height and the radius. Right here is the thickness of the sphere. So basically the radius will be, the inside radius is going to be specified by the user. The outside radius is going to be that plus another five meters. Uh, let me see. Let me actually put that here. So inside radius. Uh, the strut width is basically going to be 10. So we're, think, we're going to consider these as a, a square. Uh, these struts as having square cross sections that are basically... Um, most of the materials removed except for some, you know, diagonal pieces, uh, or sorry, pieces that form triangular, uh, sort, of, sort of that turn the strut into triangles. Uh, you can probably tell that I'm not really an engineer right here. I just, uh, I'm kind of winging this. Um, but we're going to say that the total amount of material in the strut width is going to be, if you were to make a solid rectangular uh, prism, and then you just take out 80% uh, of that material. Or, yeah, you remove 80%, so 20% uh, is left. I should probably fix that down here. Regardless, uh, that's what I have up here. Right here, I'm asking the user for height and radius of the inside radius of their uh, water tower that they want to make. And right here, this block of code, I'll put a comment up here. Uh, this block of code checks to make sure height and radius conform to uh, require 
requirements uh, listed above. So I have an if statement right here that basically what this whole condition does, I'm going to break this down for you. So I have a negation of everything inside here. So we should what we should really do is check everything inside the negation first. This and, or sorry, this statement right here says is true if the minimum height is less than or equal to the height, which is something that we want. We want the height to be greater than or equal to the minimum height. This says the this is true if the maximum height is greater than or equal to the height, also something that we want. <clears throat> and you'll see that the radius ones down here work pretty similarly. So considering the fact that all of these are anded together, which means that this whole statement inside of the parentheses is true whenever all of these are true, what we should get out of this is that this entire statement inside of the parentheses will return true when the height and the radius are correct, or when, when they conform to our specifications. Now, what you can see is that I put an, a knot around all of this, and the reason why I have a knot here is because what I want this whole statement to be is I want this whole statement to be true whenever something goes wrong. So whenever at least one of these is false, the whole statement inside of the parentheses will be false, which means that this whole thing is true. This whole condition, including the not, is true. Now, the reason why I want that is because if this whole condition is true, if something has gone wrong, then I want to display an error to the user. And what the error will basically do is it will say, hey, the height and the radius do not conform to the regulations. And then it gives all of the regulations that uh, the height and radius must conform to. And as you can see right here, this end signifies the end of the if block. So after this end, we can assume that all of the code is going to happen. But um, that's basically what's going on here is the user inputs a height and radius. If one of these is wrong, it yells at the user. It gives them the, uh, the requirements for the height and the radius. And then it calculates the volume of a water tower with that height and radius. So... Let's, let's try running this a few times and see what happens. So let's say our height, let's do something right in the middle of both of these measurements. So let's say our height is 20 and our radius is going to be, let's say 70. And right here, you can see that the uh, it calculates the total volume of material in terms of uh, meters cubed and it doesn't give us any errors. It doesn't yell at us at all. And this is because the height and the radius are perfect. They are exactly what need to be what they need to be. Now let's see what happens if we do the same thing again. And let's say the height is five and the inside radius is 70. So we have a really stubby little, um, we have a really stubby little uh, water tower right here. And you can see now that the error actually pops up. Now it, the problem is, is that I've put in, you know, I've put in the height, I've put in a radius and it doesn't say which of the two is uh, it does not conform to regulations. It just says height and radius do not conform to regulations. So actually, I should probably uh, change this as well. I should probably say that this is height or radius, just to uh, just to align with the fact that you know, or implies that at least one of them, if not both, do not conform to regulations, rather than saying and, which would imply that both do not conform to regulations. So what we have here is the height is wrong, the radius is fine. You get an error saying that the height or radius do not conform to the regulations. It prints out the regulations for the height and for the radius, and then it calculates the volume of the material anyway, which you'd think it wouldn't do that, right? Because the, the thing is, is that if your height and radius, uh, height and or radius aren't correct, then why would you want to calculate the volume of material for the water tower anyway? It doesn't make sense because you're not going to build the thing because, you know, you need to go back and say, hey, fix your height, fix your radius all that kind of stuff. So in the rest of this video, I'm hoping to address issues like these in order to make this program work a lot more smoothly. So let's take a look at how we can, uh, let's take a look at how we can really do a big simplification by only calculating the volume of the material if the height and radius are correct. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to post this code on Canvas so that you'll be able to uh, play with this a little bit, uh, play with this version of the code and see uh, what happens when you know different things have different values. 
So right here, what I have is a modification of our if statement, which is the if else statement. So basically what happens is the if statement part of it works normally. You know, if this condition is true, then you're going to run all of this code in here. However, what this else does, well here, okay. Let me, uh, let me just put down here. Let's say if the condition is true, I'm gonna put this green line, you know, condition is true. So then it comes down here and it says, okay, now I'm going to just go back down to the end and do that. So if the condition is true, the code runs all of this stuff in this block right here, and then goes to, until after the end and just continues running code. However, if the condition is false, let's say I'm gonna use this purple again. If the condition is false, then it's going to skip this block and go into our else block. And it's gonna run all this code, and then it'll come down to the end and run all the code after it. So what that else does is it actually lets us specify what code should be run if our condition is false. So we can have something run here if the condition is true and something run here if, they get it, if the condition is false. And then after the end, they both just start running normally. So what I've, what I've done is I've modified the water tower code so that in here, this just produces the error and this calculates the size of the water tower because we don't need a water tower if the uh, height and radius are wrong. And then, yeah, it just presents the results in here and finishes the code. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Okay, so what I have here is I have this modified code with, um, I have this modified code with all of the changes made. So I have actually added the if uh, the uh, else statement right here. And as you can see, I put the calculations of the volume and the, uh, the final print statement inside of the else statement. So there's actually nothing after the end right here. So this if statement, basically, if something is wrong with the height and the radius, it uh, displays all the errors here. And the else statement here uh, calculates everything if everything is correct. So let's take a look at what happens when uh, we plug in a bad height. Uh, let's say height is 5 again, uh, inside of the case to 70, which should be a good one. Uh, when there's a bad height, you can see all the errors pop up, and it gives the minimum height, minimum radius. Again, it's only saying that the uh, it, it's only saying that one of these two is not correct. So you still have to do the work to say, okay, well, is it the height that's wrong, or is it the radius that's wrong? So we'll try to fix that a bit later. If we do uh, similarly, if we do a valid height and an invalid radius uh, like that, then it gives the same error with no really differentiation. Um, but if we do a valid height and radius, let's say uh, 20 and 80, like so, then it calculates the volume, the total volume of material, which is which is exactly what we want right here. So these are the changes that have been made to our if then or to our if else statement. But I, I really think that it can't be stated enough that this part right here should be changed because we want to be able to tell the user, hey, the height is wrong, or hey, the radius is wrong, and so on. So we'll we'll focus on that. We'll make one more addition to our if-else statement, and that will really make this program pretty banging, at least if you ask me. So let's check that out. All right, so now what I have on screen is the if-else-if-else if else type of statement. So what we have right here is we have a if with a certain condition, and this works the same as an if statement or an if else statement, where if this condition one is true, then you go down here into this block, and then you just cut all the way down to after end and do that. However, if condition one is false, what ends up happening is you go down and then you cut around it and check condition two. Now, if condition two is true, then you would go down here, do all this block of code underneath here, and then go to the end, like so. Now, let's say that we're looking at another scenario where condition one ends up being false. And let's say condition two ends up being false. Then you can come down to condition three right here. Let's say if that's true, then you would go down here, cut down to end, and continue. And you can have as many conditions as you want. So you can have a lot of different else ifs. Um, uh, so, these are all these scenarios right here where condition one is true, condition two is true, condition three is true, and so on. So what we can actually assume is that in this pink scenario right here, because we go into the condition three block, 
that condition two and condition one are both false. Similar here, if, since we, in the purple scenario here, since we've gone down into the condition two block, this means that we can assume condition one is false and stuff like that. And finally, if they're all false, I'm going to uh, try to use this blue over here. If they're all false, then you know we go over to condition two, then we go over to condition three without doing any of that code. And eventually we go all the way down to else and with, uh, let's say we go all the way down to else with none of these conditions being true, then we would work on the else code and then come back here and do all the block of code after end. Now I've put right here that the else is actually optional. So if you want to do nothing, if all of these conditions are false, then you can completely leave out the else and everything will be totally fine. So something that I also want to mention is that these blocks of code inside of, uh, after these conditions and after this else and stuff like that, they behave pretty much exactly the same as regular MATLAB blocks of code uh, with a few exceptions is that, one is that if you define a variable in here, um, then you won't necessarily be able to use it after this uh, condition, especially if you define a variable here, and then you, so let's say you say something like um, x equals five in here, you won't be able to use x here, and you won't be able to use x here, and so on, you won't be able to use x here. So that's one, th that's, that's one thing that you have to be aware of when you're doing your if statements. Another thing you can be aware of is that you can actually put an if statement inside of an if statement. So I could do an if statement inside of here, and that would be totally fine. But yeah. With all of these, this gets us to the uh, sort of the full power of our if statements right here. So what my plan is for the um, for the water tower code is we can say that this is the condition where the radius is incorrect. Or let's say let's, this is the condition where the height is incorrect. This is the condition where the radius is incorrect. Maybe, uh, you know, we can do all that. And then down here, this is the condition where they both are good. So let's take a look at what happens when we do something like that. Okay, so I have the improved code right here. So this if statement basically just uh, this whole condition is true if the height is wrong in some way. This whole condition is true if maybe the uh, if the radius is wrong in some way. And this all happens if the um, basically if the uh, everything is totally fine. So if height is wrong, we go into here. If radius is wrong, we go into here. And if um, everything is okay, we go into here. So let's see what happens when we run this. Let's say first we're going to give a bad height and a good radius. So let's say five and 70. We can see that just the height shows up right here. So it doesn't say anything about the radius. It just says that the height doesn't conform to regulations. Now let's go through this again. Let's do a good height and a bad radius. So 800, which should be, 8,000 F even should be a good radius to uh, trick up our program. And now it just says that the radius doesn't conform to regulations. So that's perfect. And then if we do good height, good radius, uh, let's say 20, 70, then it calculates the volume of the material just fine. One thing I do want to show you is let's see what happens if the height and the radius are bad. Let's see, so let's say height is five, radius is 800. Notice that it just shows us that the height is wrong because what happens is our code is going down and it, at line 13, it checks that the height is bad. It sees that the height is bad. It goes into here and says, okay, well now the height is bad. So we're gonna skip all of that. And because all the radius checking code is in an else if, it never checks the radius code whatsoever. It just goes in here, it says, okay, height is bad. We're not gonna do anything else. We're just gonna proceed to the end. So what we can actually do if we wanna fix that is we can try, uh, well, what we need to do in order to fix that is we can try to mess with our if else statements in order to make this possible. So make it so that if the height and radius are wrong, it gives us both. If the height is wrong, it gives us someone. If the radius is wrong, it gives us something. And if ev if everything is good, then we can um, construct the radius of our, we can construct, oh, sorry, we can calculate the volume of our material. 
So I'll do one more modification so I can show you what happens if we want to check, if we want to put in an additional check that the height and the radius are good, or are both bad together. All right, so here's one possible way of, uh, of making that change. So what I have right here is inside of the if statement where we check to see if the minimum height is wrong. So at this point, uh, we'll say that height is bad, check radius. And we'll do another if statement inside of this to see, hey, is the radius good or is the radius bad? If we end up in here, we would say that the uh, radius is bad. So we'll print that both the height and the radius do not conform to regulations. And you'll see that I, in here, I have the minimum and maximum radius stuff, but I don't have the max minimum and maximum height. I'll show you one in a second. Let's first check out this else. So we can say that uh, in here, uh, height is, uh, radius is good. I should say radius is good. So we know that only the height is the problem at this point. So we'll print out the error message for height. And then in the end, because in both cases, I want to print out the minimum height and the maximum height, I have all this code after the end so that no matter what path uh, our code comes down, it's going to print that the minimum height and the maximum height are you know 10 and 30 meters respectively. So let's take a look at how this part works. So what I have here is I'll do the height. Um, let's say the height is five and I'll do a good radius so far. So or at, for this one, so inside radius is 70. And you'll see that just the height stuff prints. So it goes into this if statement here because the height is bad. It checks if the radius is good. The radius is actually good. So it goes into this else. It prints out the height error message and then prints out the maximum height, uh, the minimum height and the maximum height. Now, if we do something like the height and the radius are both bad. So let's say height is 200, radius is 800, something like this. Now you can see that the height and radius message uh, is printed out here, along with the minimum and maximum radius. And then it goes to the end where the minimum and maximum height messages are printed. So right here, this is an example of using a uh, if then uh, an if else statement nested inside of an if else statement in order to really more precisely tune fine tune our error messages. Uh, there's one more one more way I want to show you of accomplishing the same problem. Uh, rather than doing nested if else statements, I'm going to just increase the number of else if statements in order to deal with this problem. So let's take a look at how that one works. Okay, so here is the last piece of code. And what this is going to do is basically the exact same thing as before. So it's going to give us whether or not the height and the radius do not conform, that just the height conforms, just the radius conforms, or if all of them conform. So this one right here, let's take a look at this condition. This is basically saying right here, this checks if the height is good. And this checks if the radius is good. And which what that means is that if we put a knot around this whole part right here, this says, okay, this part is true if the height is bad. This part is true if the radius is bad. And I just realized this needs to be an and, not an or. My apologies. So what we need is that this whole thing will be true if the height is bad and if the radius is bad. So if you want, you can pause the video and you could take a look at this entire statement, try to work out really how it's being, try to decompose it down to the individual parts and see um, basically how the height being good or bad affects this whole statement and the radius being good or bad affects the whole statement. And what happens if they're both good, if they're both bad, if one is good, if one is bad, all that kind of stuff. But this whole thing right here just controls for the height and the radius both being bad. So we have all the stuff that prints out if the height and radius are both bad. This else if right here, now remember, since we're in an else if, we're assuming that this is not true. So if we find out that this part is true, but this whole condition was false, or sorry, yeah, if this whole thing was true and this whole condition was false, what this means is that, well, the height must be bad and the radius must be good because if this, you know, if this whole thing returns true, then we know that this whole thing must have returned true because they're exactly the same, which means that the part that made this condition false is right here. So in conclusion, if we know that if we end up at this line of code right here at line 22 slash line 23, 
we'll know that not only is the height bad, but the radius is for sure good. So we can just print out the height stuff right here. Similar thing for line 28 right here. If we, if we are here, we know that this was false and this was false, but this was true, which means that this whole part right here must have been true since this part of the condition is exactly the same thing as this, like there, which means that this part here must be false. So we can uh, assume that the radius is bad and the height is good, and we can just print out the radius stuff right here. And then in the else, we can assume that everything is good because right here we're saying it is... Uh, if we've gone through all of these, then we know that the height must be good and we know that the radius must be good. So everything is fine here. We'll, uh, we'll just run our uh, volume calculating uh, code right here. So I'm going to run this code. Let's say we choose a bad height. Let's say 200, radius is 70, bad height code only. Uh, let's see if uh, the height is good and the radius is bad. So 25 something like that. And right here we have that the radius is bad, so that's perfect. Now let's see what happens when they both are bad. Uh, so I'm going to say that this is 90 and this is 2. Now it says that both do not conform to regulations. And finally, we're going to do something that we're going to show what happens when they're both good. So 20, 70, we just calculate the uh, volume of the material. So what I recommend is Maybe saving a copy of this code or maybe uh, a copy of this code as well. You know, take a look at both of those. And basically, take a look, maybe print them up on paper if you have them, or just follow the path of the code. When the height, uh, with different values of height, different values of radius, to see if you can, um, if, it, if you can see why everything is going into every, uh, Every path is basically taking the path through the code that it is taking. So choose some scenarios where maybe radius is bad, height is good, height is bad, radius is good, both are bad, both are good. See if you can figure out, see if you can feel comfortable exactly with exactly why all of this is working. That's my recommendation just for uh, feeling more comfortable with uh, if then statements right here. So all of this wraps up our discussion on if, L if uh, statements or if else, if uh, if, else, if, else, you know, all that kind of stuff. That's going to finish talking about just the if statement. Now, I have one more type of conditional statement to talk about right here. And for that, we're going to need a different problem. So let's, uh, I'll introduce that in just a second. All right, so for this next problem, I'm going to introduce, uh, you know, this idea that comes out of d and I, I play, uh, I play uh, tabletop role-playing games quite a bit, and if this comes as a, as a surprise to you, um, I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm a computer science grad student that teaches classes. Of course, of course, I'm a nerd like this. But regardless, um, what we have right here is we have something called a critical fumble table. Now, uh, every once in a while, uh, you know, D&D has these rules that are supposed to in some way represent somewhat realistic combat. So every once in a while, you're going to, you know, swing your sword at an enemy, or you're going to fire a bow and arrow at an enemy or stuff like that, you know, and you're, every once in a while you miss. And sometimes you miss uh, catastrophically. And when you have a catastrophic uh, miss like that, then sometimes you'll, sometimes uh, you will end up rolling on a table like this to determine uh, what bad things happen to you in a catastrophic uh, miss. So... In this case, we have we're basically generating a random number between one and ten, uh, inclusive, and the result of that random number will basically tell you what happens once you have this uh, horrible critical miss. So, for example, if you roll a uh, if you roll a six, maybe your attack misses so hard that you actually punch yourself in the ear, and that makes it impossible for you to hear anything because your ear is ringing for a good amount of time. Or maybe uh, you roll an eight and you have a stuck weapon, so the weapon kind of the weapon maybe hits, but it, it's something, but it gets stuck and you're not able to really wedge it free for a little bit of time. So all of this stuff right here, uh, basically, it's a really nice way of sort of 
hey, uh, you really mess up. Now here's this random chance thing that happened as a result of you messing up. And here's how what you have to do in order to really be able to um, really be able to uh, continue playing the game. So let's say we're trying to build something like this, where we have, um, basically, we, cal we calculate a random number, and then based on the value of that random number, we're going to print out the result of what happens when, um, we're going to print out the result of what happens when you hit that random number. So we could use an if-then statement, right? We could say, if random number equals one, then do this. Else if random number equals two, then do this. Else if random number equals three, else if random number equals four, and so on and so on and so on. It's a little bit tedious. And luckily, MATLAB has a really nice way for us to actually cut down on the amount of work that we need to do in order to, um, basically in order to program out all of these hyper-specific cases. So let's take a look at that. All right, so what I want to talk about right now is the switch case statement. And what I have is I have two statements that should do pretty much the same thing. Uh, run right here is representing the problem as a uh, sort of if-then statement, right? So we have, we're basically setting the value equal to something. In this case, we'll be setting the value equal to some random number between 1 and 10. Then we say, okay, well, if the value equals 1, then we'll do something. We'll print it out. Else if the value value equals two, we'll print we'll print out the right statement. Else if the value equals three, print else if the value equals four, else if the value equals five, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. All the way until we hit else if the value equals ten, print something out here. And I'll put an else right here just as an error case, just in case uh, something goes wrong. Then yeah, you know, we have this little nice little error right here. And then I'll do an end and you know do the rest of the code down there. Now we have this equivalent structure up here, the switch case structure, which basically says switch value equals a random number between one and 10. And then rather than saying if value equals something else, if value equals something else, et cetera, et cetera, we can just say case value one, do all the code that we would normally put in here. So this code is the same. Case value two, this code is the same. Case value three, case value four, case value five, et cetera, et cetera all the way until we do a case value 10. And then we have this otherwise, which basically acts as an else statement. And then we have an end just like we would in an if statement and then everything continues. So a switch case statement often can work like a uh, if then statement in certain cases. If our uh, if then statements conditions are basically just something equals something, uh, value equals something, value equals something, et cetera, et cetera, value equals something. The time when you would want to use a switch case statement is when we uh, are trying to evaluate the value of a certain uh, variable that we've created by uh, just looking at very specific um, words. We're, we're looking at very specific values that our variable might have. So this is perfect for it because we can say role equals random number between 1 and 10 case role equals one, case, ro uh, case role equals two, case role equals three, et cetera, et cetera. So let's take a look at what that looks like in MATLAB. All right, so here's my code for that problem. Basically what I've done here is I say, let's generate a random integer between one and 10. That's what this rand i function does. And then we're going to do a switch statement on the output of this, uh, of this function right here. So Rand i will give me a random integer between one and ten, and in each case, I have, uh, you know, I have something defined for each of the possible values of rand i. So, let's see what happens when I run it. Okay, so the first thing I got was weapon breaks, which means that I rolled a, a ten right there. Uh, next thing I got also weapon breaks, uh, lost grip, weapon breaks again, weapon breaks. Ear slap, counter attack, lost grip, and so on and so on. So here's some. So just this is an example of a uh, of just a case statement. But let's say we want to uh, words. Let's say we want to make sure that we can. Um, let's say we want maybe one and two do the same thing. So let's say one and two both have a furious struggle, and we're going to get rid of lost grip completely. So you can put in curly braces one, 
two like this. And I'm just going to get rid of this, uh, of our case two right here. And what this is actually going to do is it will say, okay, well, if I roll a one and a two, I'm oh, sorry, a one or a two, it will be a furious struggle. Otherwise it will be one of the others. So let's see. I guess it's not very visible. Um, well, here we did a furious circle, which means that you know we rolled one of those two values, but it's not exactly visible which one it is. So let me um, modify this code a bit so we can say uh, roll equals rand i ten. Actually, even better, yeah, roll equals rand i ten. Um, f print f uh, roll, and then uh, print out an integer. Just like that, and we're gonna switch on. Oh. Wow, my computer does not like me right now. Okay, we're gonna switch on the value of roll. So now let's see what happens here. Uh, on a roll nine, we got a counter attack. I'm just gonna keep on going until we get a roll of one or two, which might take a while given that. Oh, here it is. Roll two, furious struggle, just like that. Now let's say we want only two options right here. We want, uh, if a one or a two, we want a furious struggle and everything else we want weapon breaks. So we can actually, if we get rid of all of this, we can actually put in an otherwise, which basically if rolls a one or a two, it'll be a furious struggle and anything else will be a weapon breaks. So let's see, weapon breaks on a roll of eight, furious struggle on a roll of one, weapon breaks on a roll of three, furious struggle on a roll of one, Free struggle, weapon breaks, and so on. So we can play with it, with it like that. But that is basically, in essence, the uh, switch case statement. And it's just like what we have with the uh, if-then statement, we can actually, inside of here, we can put more switch case statements, or we can put an if-then-else statement, and so on. So we can really treat this like a uh, block of MATLAB code as normal. Um, and we can also put switch case states uh, that switch case statements inside of if then statements as well. So these can really go inside of any normal block of MATLAB code. All right. Well, with this, this is uh, this is all of the uh, conditional statements in MATLAB. Just statements that, based on the value of certain conditions, will sort of implement different blocks of code. So stay tuned for when we. Um, take this idea of conditional statements and then really ramp it up with uh, statements that repeat multiple times. But for now, this is the end of the video. Thank you all so much for watching.